Welcome back to the watch list. I'm Nicole Petalides. Time to take a look at some of the big automakers. When we look at some of the big two, uh, you know, when we talk about Ford and GM, Kevin Roberts, Director of Industry Insights and Analytics at CarGurus, and William McDummer, CEO and Lead Portfolio Manager at EMG Advisors. Thank you both for being with us. Um, you know, Kevin, I'll start with you. We know they've, they've moved away from EVs. Hybrid seems to be the better way to go. Um, is Ford in a good position? Yeah, I thought it was really interesting. If you look at their release, they talked about freedom of choice uh, and really kind of pushing that uh, options for consumers. So if you want an internal combustion engine vehicle, a hybrid or an EV, they have them and it's really up to the consumers to make the choices now. So a big kind of shift in kind of the messaging from what we've seen over the past couple of years, but they seem to have the hybrids for consumers if they want them. You know, what's interesting is I know that the committees have been advising GM and Ford to move more towards hybrids because people aren't ready to, for EVs, but the smartest, the big money, whatever you want to call it, people like Ron Barron, like Elon Musk, like Steve Wesley, who was on the, on the Tesla board, you know, he was saying, forget hybrids, that's not what it is, because you know, batteries are expensive, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. that it's EVs, but we just need to get there. Um, what, do you, what are you thinking here right now, William? Yeah, I think that that's the reality of it, but you know, the hybrids are a gateway drug to EV adoption. People sh showed last year that they're not willing to take the two feet jump into the EV marketplace, but they might be willing to put one leg in and take the hybrid. And then as they become familiar with how often they're leveraging it, the range, range anxiety goes away, maybe they're easing themselves into the full adoption of the EV. And so I think that this is a smart way for Ford to break out their three lines of business, show that the two lines of business that we're most used to seeing are very healthy, revenue positive, revenue generative, but be able to point to the fact that this little silo over here that we call EV, does have tax incentives, it is here to stay, we are committed to it, but let's be clear about where our losses are and where they're coming from, and don't commingle that with the commercial business or with the tried and true blue business, as they call it. Right, right. Um, Kevin, you talked about Ford, hybrid sales up 36%. GM didn't call out hybrids, but continues to tout EV lineup. I was under the impression that, for, that GM was doing a lot more with hybrids, but in the end, is it all EVs, in your opinion, in 10, 20 years? Yeah, I think the long-term trend is still going to be EVs. It's just, it, it's a difficult uh, adoption curve now to get consumers in there. And then we've seen so much price cuts on the EV market, which is great for consumers in the market now. But for anyone who recently purchased an EV, it can really kind of impact the residual values of those EVs. And so I think all this kind of continuing disruption in the EV space it's going to make it a little bit more challenging to get that adoption curve up in the near and midterm. Uh, but as prices come down, I think we'll start to see a lot more adoption of EVs for consumers. I still think that's the, kind of the long term trend. Yeah. So where, what are the best plays? I mean, you also have um, Stellantis when we think about the big three. What are we what is the takeaway from the earnings this quarter and what we're hoping for going forward, William? I mean, are these going to be the competitive players? They made it through all the strikes and everything and seem to be well positioned or no. What do you think? Are these winning stocks? Well, I think they're tried and true. They're here to stay. I mean, we're talking about companies that have been around for over 100 years, a couple of them. So they're not going anywhere. What they've shown us through this last quarter, I think, is that they're going to stick to what made them who they are. They're not going to go and show a year of losses to completely abandon their supply chain, completely abandon you know, their, their traditional methods for making vehicles. And so they're going to innovate slower. And that's what Wall Street has shown that they want them to do. You know, the institutional investor base has said, I want predictability. I want to see that you are uh, making cars, that you're making them cheap enough to make revenue per car. And, and that's what I'm asking for when I'm buying your stock. That's a different story than the Tesla investor or the EV investor who's willing to see losses because they're investing in innovation and they're investing for 10 years out as opposed to 10 months out. And, you know, that saying that Ford, uh, the pro area, pro remains one of the best 
businesses and autos. I, I, you know, I don't know, maybe you could explain more about that, Kevin, but um, you know, over at Car Gurus, what seems to be leading the way in the big picture? Yeah, I think the major kind of question now that we're looking at is vehicle affordability. The prices of new vehicles have gotten so high and we're seeing a lot more interest in kind of lower priced new vehicles out there and they aren't very available at this point. And so at this point, I think it's going to be a question of our automakers can be able to pivot and actually make some more affordable vehicles out there for consumers that uh, they can aff afford at uh, attractive monthly payments. Yeah, and I'll tell you, um, Elon Musk was talking about the fact that people don't have more than $400 for a car payment and has been touting the idea that there is a cheaper Tesla coming out. Um, final thoughts, William? Yeah, I think, you know, people seeking exposure to the auto industry should have Ford, they should have GM, they should have Stellantis. Those guys are going to be here to stay. But I do think in the long term, Tesla is going to lap them. They're they're finding ways to innovate faster. They're building cars cheaper. And I foresee the future EV marketplace of GM and Ford uh, trucks coming off the line with Tesla batteries under the hood. I mean, we got to just realize that Ford's going to be Ford. They're going to be who they've been for 100 years. And we should maybe bifurcate these things and invest in EV directly with Tesla and be proud to own you know, the commercial side of the business through the Ford and the Econo lines and the F-150s that you see driving down every construction site in America. All right. Thank you so much. It's great to see you both. Kevin Roberts of Car Gurus and Will McDonough of CEO of Corestone Capital. Thank you. Good to see you both.